What's up, everybody? Today, we're having a look at a brand new tool from the Laravel team called Laravel Wayfinder. And no, it has nothing to do with me, but of course, I made the joke. I said, guys, what's going on? Why are you making a tool to find me? I'm right here, babies. And you know what they said? They said, absolutely nothing, because it's not that funny. But let's have a look at the description. Laravel Wayfinder bridges your Laravel backend and TypeScript frontend with zero friction. It automatically generates fully typed and portable titles. Okay, so here's what's going on, right? Have you ever been in a situation where in your JavaScript or in your front end, you wanted to link to a particular controller action or even like a named route, but those aren't available, right? So if you're working with React or Vue, those routes and those named routes aren't available to you. So what do you end up doing? Well, maybe you just end up hard coding the path, right? So on your back end, you have named routes, but on your front end, you just duplicate, right? You write the full hard coded path. And you know, depending on the project, this isn't a huge deal, but as developers, we don't really love it. We don't want to do a bunch of search and replace every time we change a URI. So this will help us fix it. And I'll show you how to use it today. <laughs> Now, to make this as real life as possible, I'm actually going to use the Laracast code base for these examples. So let's work together. Step one, as always, is to pull in the package. So I will paste that in. And then next, you'll see instructions for how to set up a V plugin. And this is basically a file watcher that will regenerate the assets uh, as you change a controller action or a named route. Uh, but we'll come back to that in just a minute. If I scroll down, Basically, what that file watcher is doing is it's dynamically running this command. So if I scroll up, you can see, all right, we're going to run when a file changes, run PHP artisan wayfinder generate, right? So we're just going to do it manually for now. Let's get going. PHP artisan wayfinder generate. All right. So if we scroll up, you'll see it creates a actions directory as well as a routes directory for your front end. Uh, let's have a look at that right now. Okay, so now in my project tree view, you can see I'm just filtering it down or creating a scope to show only new or changed files. So sure enough, that command added a new actions folder and a bunch of TypeScript files and a routes folder. All right, so don't let this confuse you. They kind of do similar things. So I'm going to show you an example. This is the simplest thing we have in the Laracast code base, our blog, right? So you, you do this in, in dummy 101 tutorials, and this is perfect uh, for the illustration. I can see that I have a blog controller that consists of an index action as well as a show action. And sure enough, right here, those are being referenced. So Wayfinder can scan this and see, all right, yep, we got this action, we got this action that corresponds to that. URI that corresponds to this URI, right? And it can create the appropriate TypeScript named function that we can call to send the user to that corresponding URL, again, without requiring that we manually write it out, which is cool. However, we also have named routes here, log.index and log.show, and that's going to go within the routes folder. So yeah, it's, it's almost like two different ways that we can trigger these URIs, usually dependent upon what your preference is. All right, so uh, yeah, let's just dig in and see what happens. Within my blog controller, if I scroll down, let's start within the index action, and that loads a blog slash index view using inertia. All right, so if we scroll down, it's very simple. We just have a couple post collections. And you know what? Let me show you what this looks like in the browser. Yep, very, very simple stuff, right? So we have a collection of posts, and each one of these posts I refer to as a card, post card. I click on that card, and it takes me to the corresponding blog post. All right, let's switch back. So within here, I can go into my collection, and sure enough, here's each individual card. And if I click through here, we have a link that takes the user to the corresponding uh, blog post. And sure enough, notice that I am hard coding that URI. All right, so again, be reasonable, right? In some situations, it just doesn't matter. You're probably never going to change this URI, right? Uh, but in other situations, it may just feel gross, or you happen to know, like, look, these URIs will sometimes change, and we want to avoid the situation where we're doing some kind of um, destructive search and replace across the entire code base for every single reference uh, to this URI, right? So what are some ways that we could traditionally solve this? Well, Again, we could do something like this, maybe. I could return to our blog controller. And yeah, you can see we're passing through a post JSON resource. 
And yeah, we have titles like all the stuff you would normally expect. But here's one thing we could do. I could also send through a path, and I will often define this on my model. So if I click through to post, yeah, that's just referencing a named route. So it's just a wrapper around a call to a named route. And yeah, what you could do is simply pass that to your front end. That way, your front end doesn't have to manually um, figure out what the URI should be. It receives the URI, and then it just defers to it. And yeah, this is this is a fine way to handle it. Maybe a little manual. Like You would have to remember to do this uh, for all of your eloquent models. Or remember, you could also just hard code it here. Uh, it works, but it's something you have to think about. Nonetheless, if we were to switch back, I could swap this out with post dot path and yeah now we've we've removed some of that duplication and that's one way to go but of course we're focused on wayfinder here which gives us a lot more flexibility so let's find a new solution i'm going to scroll to the top for my script and now because we have generated actions and routes let's just pull one of those in and call it all right so let's decide do we want the action or the route let's start with the action so i'm going to say import and yeah if you're trying to figure out well what do i import well just think of what your action name is in this case i want to go to the show action on blog controller so one thing you could do is just import the blog controller uh, directly so notice we're going to go into your resources js directory and actions and then notice it's just following the exact path uh, that you have to find on your back end, which is really cool. And what I like about this is within your component, there's almost like a one-to-one -one connection uh, to the corresponding controller. And especially when you're working with inertia, this is really useful because this is what's going on, right? I'm doing some stuff. And then where are we going from there? Well, at that point, I want to go into blog controller and I want to hit this action. And it just makes it, I don't know, easier for me to comprehend what's going on here. All right, so if I were to scroll down to our link, I could replace this with blog controller and notice what we have here. Sure. Okay, but now for any named route, like if I'm showing a blog post, I need to send through uh, either the ID or the slug, whatever the appropriate key would be uh, for that post. So I'm gonna send it through post.slug. That is uh, the unique identifier for a post, at least in terms of the URI. And this will do it. So let's switch back to the browser. And I have Vite running behind the scenes, by the way. So if I click on any of these, bada bing, bada boom, it just works exactly the way it did before. Let's go ahead and inspect element. And you can see, there we go. It's still linking to the exact same URI. So we, we ran a single command, right? Wayfinder generate, and it prepared all of the rest. So cool. So if you like this, you can import the entire controller. And like I said, this just works for me, right? I love seeing blog controllers show. I know where I'm going, right? However, if you want, of course, you could destructure. You could say, all right, give me that show action. And then I will update it. And of course, this is going to work as well. So notice I'm combining this with the inertia uh, link component. And when we do, this show method is actually returning an object, but inertia understands what to do with that object. Alternatively, I'll show you something. Uh, where can we put this? Just right here. If I were to say show post.slug and I just spit this out, uh, let's see what we get. Yeah, notice right here, focus your attention there. Uh, you get an object that consists of the method and the URL, right? So that means in situations like this, if you want to explicitly refer to the, the path or the string itself, you could do uh, show, give me the URL. And now if I switch back in those situations where you're not working with a link component, you can reference that as well. So yeah, this is just a helper that we get because of inertia. And keep in mind, this is going to work for a link component, but it's also going to work for a form component or the use form um, helper that inertia provides the exact same thing, which is really cool. All right, so let's clear this out and uh, let's review another example. Uh, for the next one, we will switch over to a named route if you happen to be using those. So here's what I'll do. Let's click through to one of these. And yeah, right here, I have a section that will just redirect us back to the blog. Now, in this case, it's part of the interface. This is actually kind of funny. It's part of the UI that we say redirect blog just for fun, right? Uh, but it's funny because I'm showing you how to not hard code these paths while literally in the URI, we are hard coding the path. But, you know, that won't be the case for you. So let's go to blog show. 
And if I scroll down, we have this post meta. All right, and if I scroll down, we have a label block, which is just a, a wrapper around a link. And yeah, sure enough, once again, when you click on it, we are hard coding that path back to the blog. And if you don't want that, let's get rid of it. So like we did before, if we're using actions, we would import blog controller like so, and then we would bind this, not really bind, but we would call blog controller dot index. And that's gonna take us back. Works great. Switch back click on it, it works. And even better, like I said, it's just crystal clear what's going on. When you click on this, I want to hit the index action on my blog controller. So now I see that and I immediately know, okay, the next thing that's going to happen is this code is going to be ran, right? That's what I like. Um, and once again, we could destructure it if we just want to call it directly. But yeah, this time, why don't we instead use named routes? So yeah, let's say this time we won't go into actions, we'll go into routes, and we know there is blog slash index. And of course, because it's index, I can just leave it off entirely. And I'll get something just like this. Okay, so now I can say call index, and we're gonna get the exact same thing as before. Let's give it a test. Run it again, click on it, and we are right back to where we started. Okay, so yeah, here's what you need to remember. If I open this up here, because we have blog.index as a named route and blog.show, well, index, and notice the URI here, notice it prepares uh, an object here. This is what's being returned, the URL and the method. It sets the URL. We have a getter here. We have head if that's uh, preferable. And then notice what's happening though. Because index is often the, the default for a folder when performing an import, it's going to return the, the full blog namespace, right? So that's where we were destructuring index out of it. But yeah, that means if we want to, if I switch back, we could once again just say, okay, I have a blog namespaced namespace, right? And we're going to pull that in. And yeah, once again, if we want to reproduce what we had earlier, I could do something just like this. And again, it's just going to work. One more time, click on a link, refresh, try to go back. And that works exactly the way it did before. But now, once again, we are not hard coding these paths if we don't want to. Okay, so now I want to finish up by showing you an example of using inertia forms along with Wayfinder. Let's do that now. Uh, let's see, we have a, let's close all of this out. We have a leave team component. So basically, if you are invited to a Laracast team, but you want to exit the team, we have a component where we say, all right, yeah, you're on the team. Do you want to leave, right? So it's a form that consists of a button and it says, hey, do you want to leave your team? If you click on it, we say, are you sure about that? And if you do, what happens? Well, we hit this submit method. This is all real Laracast code. The submit method simply uses the form, uh, an inertia form, and it makes a post request to this endpoint. Uh, now, in this case, this isn't very restful. I'm actually grabbing team slash member slash ID slash exit. Uh, if we wanted, we could maybe make a delete request to this, and that would mean, okay, we are deleting this user from the team members list. And that might be one way to do it, but I just wanted to be crystal clear here that the person is exiting uh, from the team. Okay, so are we on the same page? We have a form. If the user submits the form, we will then say, all right, inertia, uh, create a form. Let's reference the team ID that will be sent through with the request and we will post to the given endpoint and that will remove the user, right? Okay, so now think about it. In its current state, I don't immediately know where to go. And I bet you've run into this situation too, right? You see the URI and then you have to do this awkward thing where you say, okay, well, I got to figure out what controller action corresponds to this URI, right? So you go into maybe your teams and then you look for exit and you're like, okay, here it is. This is it. Now I can click through. All right, this is how we exit. So we find the corresponding team. We remove the authenticated user. And yeah, it's just kind of annoying, right? Where you have to do that, that sequential thing where you go to the route, you find the URI, you figure out what action corresponds to that URI, and then you visit that action. Notice though, if we tweak this, so yeah, right up here, let's do this. Let's import exit. And actually on this note, real quick, if you're thinking like, well, do I use the action or do I use the route version? Like, how do I know? The answer is, well, 
do whatever your code base already does, right? So if you heavily use named routes in your code base, then use the routes version, right? Uh, that said, I think there's something incredibly appealing about the action-based version. Uh, it just works for my head, and it draws a immediate a line from the component to the corresponding controller action. And again, it just kind of fits my head. So notice right here that uh, the URI expects the current user ID, even though behind the scenes, we don't use it. The way it was implemented, we do expect it. So note that you might do this where you say, all right, user.id. However, this is not going to work. If we want to send through the Wayfinder object to an inertia form, we're actually going to swap this out with form.submit. And yeah, that's maybe something you will run into because you'll keep it as whatever the the HTTP uh, method you would expect, like delete or post. Remember, swap it out with submit, and this will take care of the rest. Because again, inertia was updated to be able to understand what this object is, and it knows that there's a method that it can uh, defer to. If I click through here, it's going to know, okay. We're doing a post request. I can read the object and I can take care of that for you. So even that's better. Now I don't have to look up like, did I make a put request here or a patch? I don't, I don't care. I just pull, I, I pull in the corresponding um, function for that controller action that I care about. And then I submit to it. And whether it's a get request or a post or a pat, like it doesn't matter to me because it's all defined here. I don't have to keep that information in my head. All right, let's give it a shot. So locally, I'm signed into Luke's account. In the settings area, sure enough, we have that you're on a team section. Let's leave it. And yep. And there we go. We're done. It just works. And yeah, remember, the entire point of all of this is so that we don't have to manually construct these URIs on the front end. Because again, it's just, it's a tedious process most of the time. You forget, okay, where are we going here? I don't know. Let's go back to the routes file. Let's find the corresponding route. What was the request type? Okay, let's copy that URI. Let's paste it in here. Now we have even more duplication, and I'm going to forget about it a month later. And it's just kind of a headache. But now I just reference the action that I want to call. And that's easy enough. When I submit this, I want to hit that exit action. So let's pull in exit from the corresponding uh, TypeScript file. And we're good to go. I just call it and we're done, which I really love. Okay, so now we're going to finish up with 30 seconds. I want to automatically regenerate these files. And then I'll let you go. All right, so back to the Wayfinder documentation. Let's scroll on down just a little bit. And yeah, in our Vite config, we're gonna run this little bit of code. So let's switch back. Vite config. And yeah, right here, I'll put it right after Laravel. Paste it in. Let's make sure that has been imported at the top. No, it hasn't. There we go. And yeah, once again, notice we have a name of Wayfinder. We're going to run PHP Artisan Wayfinder Generate. Whenever a file in our routes directory or um, any controller within the HTTP uh, directory is changed, it will regenerate that. So I'll give you an example. Uh, let's restart Vite. And yeah, let's go back into the routes section. And now we're going to say, uh, not show, we're going to go with reveal because we're unique and we're different. We don't go with show. We use the word reveal. All right, so I've changed that file. Behind the scenes, it will automatically update. Let's go into blogcontroller.ts. There it is. And let's see, where are you? Reveal, there it is. So yeah, at the very bottom, we export an index and reveal action. So that's what that file watcher is taking care of for you. So yeah, definitely make sure that's running behind the scenes. All right, so that about does it. Tell me what you think. 